Now, this is uh, another scenario that you may see in your exam. This is a patient you are working uh, in the GP uh, practice, you are FY2. Uh, you see a young patient who has come to collect the blood cells uh, from, uh, from the past. Uh, the patient has already presented to you about a couple of weeks ago uh, with the history of generalized uh, lymphadenopathy uh, or any other symptom. Uh, you have received the results which shows that the patient is um, anti, uh, antibody positive for HIV and the P24 antigen test is also positive. Uh, your task is to take history and discuss blood results and discuss management with the patient, ask if the patient has any concerns and discuss uh, them in detail. Uh, and that is your task. Uh, no, this is very important before uh, we start talking about the blood cells or any, any result uh, in general with any patient, we need to identify how the patient had been uh, doing before he came to the hospital. Essentially, as a, uh, as a patient had blood test or any test done a few days ago or a few weeks ago, and today he presented, we need to find out how they had been during this period of time before we start talking about that. And then we need to ask about their expectations. What do they think? Have they made any thought about, uh, about their results? And, uh, and if they have, what do they think it is uh, about the idea? So we need to find out and uh, we, can, we can address that as well uh, as we go along uh, during the conversation. Uh, in this patient, there are two things that I want to mention. They are very important. Uh, they mention that the patient has HIV antibody positive. The first thing that you will see uh, in any patient that becomes positive is usually P24 antigen. Uh, that becomes positive and antibodies come afterwards. So it means that the patient has some, uh, some history of exposure to the HIV virus at least a month or two months ago. So uh, P24 antigen uh, becomes positive about two to three weeks after the exposure. And before the antibodies become detectable. When you see antibody as well as antigen, it means they are at least more than a month uh, history uh, of exposure in this patient. So we need to uh, keep this in our mind. And the second thing is breaking this news to anyone is not, this is not pleasant news. This is not something like you are telling about arthritis, which can be treated in the community. And this also we need to know, uh, keep this in our mind that uh, being labeled as having HIV is considered a social stigmata, stigma in the society. So it can cause uh, uh, effects, psychological uh, impairment and the depression and anxiety and many other uh, effects on the patient's uh, health. So we need to keep all those things in our mind. We need to follow the same protocol, spikes protocol setting, ask them, why did they need all those investigations? What symptoms did they have? And did they think anything about, uh, uh, about their diagnosis after they have uh, given you the blood, cells, uh, blood samples? And uh, what do they expect? What do they think it could be? And then we explore about their general health, how they had been since they, they've given the, uh, they, they came to you last time. And then we explain the Results. So we are going to again utilize the same protocol, and essentially there is a there is a room for you to be flexible. We can uh, we need to explore whatever we need to, and uh, we uh, we in, use this protocol according to the requirement. In some areas, we need to stress more than the others. So the protocol is spikes again. Setting is. You ask the patient, why did they need the blood test? And did they think about, uh, uh, about the, uh, what the results could be and how they had been, then the perception, what did they expect from you from this meeting today? And uh, then 
delivering the information after the invitation when the patient says okay doctor i don't i don't know i really don't know i didn't think about i just came uh giving you the blood sample and went back to my work and well i don't know doctor you tell me so now this is the point where we are going to tell them unfortunately uh, it is not a great news uh, uh john uh, you uh, your tests are back and they they showing that you are uh, you have antibodies as well as you have the p24 antigen for the hiv okay then give little pause you have broken the bad news give a little pause so that the information can sink in and the patient is ready to take further information then you ask the permission okay uh, do you want me to carry on so that we can talk about how we are going to manage is there anything that you want to uh, to ask and also you can ask um, do you have any idea where this uh, uh, infection might have come from okay would you mind if i ask you a few questions uh do you have uh, uh, more than one sex partner and uh, are they your regular sex partners or uh, maybe do you use any uh, injectable uh, drugs of abuse okay so just just ask them do not mind please these are the standard question it is just in an attempt to find out how you got this infection okay Uh, so that we can offer you our help if possible and if the patient says yes doctor i am a iv drug abuser ask them do you share the needles and are you aware of uh, uh, using the the needles are you aware that the infection such infections can spread uh, from patient to patient and the patient should not use the same needle if someone is uh, is addict uh, and they uh, the need to inject uh, any drug okay so just mention about those things as well and uh, uh, the next thing is uh, the patient may ask uh, doctor what are you going to do now so this is a point after we have delivered the knowledge this is a point uh, that uh, where we need to find more information about the general health and uh, where we have to start talking about uh, Uh, how we are going to manage because the management planning depends upon the patient symptoms as well as uh, uh, on those blood results that are in your hand so uh, continue sympathy empathy throughout show emotional acknowledgement uh, if the patient looks upset just acknowledge that and mention that i know this is not a nice thing this is not a great news unfortunately but it is good that you are in the right place and we will do whatever we can and we need to okay do not worry so we need to uh, acknowledge their emotions we need to offer them sympathy empathy support whatever we can and then we summarize after we find out more about the patient how the patient's general health can uh, affect our decision uh, it depends uh, how bad the infection is the patient may have uh, the complications now you need to warn the patient that uh, there are uh, there are few things that i want to know uh, tell me if you have any chest infection so chest infection is uh, one of the criteria uh, where we need to refer the patient to the uh, to the hospital the patient may need hospitalization and admission for the chest infection itself so there are two different Uh, lines which uh, we will be going to one is uh, uh, we know that the patient is hiv positive okay so we need to treat hiv as well as additional symptoms okay additional uh, pathologies we can say okay so how to treat the hiv uh, after the patient becomes positive ideally the patient should be seen by the hiv clinic team within 48 hours 
okay however if you are not able to find any appointment within 48 hours it should not be longer than two weeks okay that is the latest appointment so that's the maximum time so we need to make sure that the patient is get seen by the hiv clinic within 48 hours of the diagnosis when you receive the results so refer the patient urgently to the hiv clinic so that they can start the treatment so uh, this is uh, by the by using the antiviral therapy. The patient will need uh, antiviral therapy. And the other thing that you want to know is whether or not this patient uh, this patient needs admission. That is a management of the complication if the patient have any. One single criteria that will require the admission is if the patient has any chest involvement, any uh, cough-like symptoms which can uh, which can be suggestive of the complications of the advanced HIV. So in that case, if the patient has any chest symptoms or chest problems, this patient will need admission. Okay, admit this patient. If the patient has a uh, chest problems by uh, by chest problems i mean to say uh, if the patient has a cough and fever lethargy anything breathing difficulty shortness of breath all all of them are suggestive of the chest infection so this patient will need admission uh, apart from that we also need to find out what are the other complications the patient uh, have so talking about the complications uh, uh, git Complications that this patient can have is oral candidiasis. Check if the patient has any uh, sore throat. If the patient has any viral hepatitis, ask if they notice any change in the color of the skin. If they notice any change in the color of the urine, that may be yellow. Okay, because of the hep hepatitis, ask if someone has mentioned that they and their eyes look pale or anything like that. And also. Uh, in advanced cases, the patient may develop diarrhea. So if the patient have any diarrhea, this patient will also need for the assessment uh, plus minus admission and treatment of that. Then the patient may have uh, uh, other complications like Kaposi sarcoma. Ask if they notice, notice any change, any rash on the skin. Uh, the patient may also have... Uh, uh, genital infection, ask them if they notice any lesion in the penoid region, uh, any change in the penoid region or in the genital area. If the patient is female, then uh, we need to refer the patient uh, for the colposcopy and the patient will also need the cervical screening uh, every year. So uh, those are the criteria and the management uh, part that we need to address depending upon the gender as well as upon the symptoms of the patient. If the patient is otherwise well, we can simply refer the patient to the HIV clinic and uh, make sure that the patient gets a time and the appointment, give them in writing, make sure that the patient's all the information, relevant information have been received by the HIV clinic by calling them and taking the name of the person who has received that information and give uh, the written documented uh, appointment time to the patient so that they can go to see the team in the HIV clinic. That's very important, okay? So now, uh, after that, uh, we mentioned this can cause a psychological impairment to the patient, ask them if they need any support, uh, and ask them if they have already um, any psychological problem like the depression, anxiety, those kind of things, because they may get worse. And ask if they need any further support in the society. Uh, so this is how we are going to take this, uh, this scenario further. The patient should be seen by the HIV team within two, two days to two weeks. Latest is a two weeks. And if the patient has any symptom, patient will need uh, management of uh, those symptoms as well as the other uh, related problems. Explain this to the patient that uh, having this infection in your body means that 
uh, your immune system may become weak and uh, uh, you are more prone to develop the infections, uh, advise them on safe sex and uh, ask them about the partner. And uh, if the patient knows the name of the partner, encourage them to bring the, pa the partner over so that you can test them and also uh, explain them how to prevent it and how to avoid it. Uh, and uh, so that you can control the spread of this uh, infection. If the patient is IV liner, explain not to use the same syringe again, uh, because uh, not only his problems can get worse, he can also give the infection to the others. So all those things are the nutshell of the management for this patient.